So today's talk is called The Intimacy of the Christ, which I felt went well with the topic of love. Now, what is intimacy? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> familiarity. That's what intimacy is. It's familiarity. It's knowing. You may not know what it is. You may not be able to describe it, but you know it. And the Christ is our divine connection to our source. It's not Jesus. Well, it is considered that Jesus is the first to have been acknowledged in his Christhood, as we'll say. Uh, and not the only one. And he really wasn't the first. It's just that's the name they came up for him when they, Christos, uh, they called him the anointed one. And while Jesus is the reason for the season, as they say, he shouldn't be made the exception. If, if some of the words he said were true, he said, you'll do all the thing I do, and even more. He didn't say, I'm the only one, and you'll never catch up. And uh, too many people in religion and uh, misguided faith keep thinking, I'll never be like that. I'll just be one of those stupid disciples. <laughs> you know, I'm always clunking around and not believing and uh, doubting and what have you. I like to affirm that the Christ in me is awake now. It means something to me. And it wasn't until I came into unity that I got a handle on the word Christ. And I, when I found it, oh, it's the awakened one. And I was working on my awakening. I had already awakened on so many levels at the point I had this realization. And it's when I could start accepting Jesus as a valuable teacher. And I was on a unity trip in 1997, and we were in at... Uh, Stonehenge. I kept wanting to say Stonehaven, and that wasn't it. Stonehenge. And I was with, uh, and the minister said it was rumored that Jesus had come there during those lost years. That's a long trip <laughs> from where he was to there. But it didn't matter. There was clearly a divine spirituality uh, there with all those rocks and everything. And I suddenly accepted uh, Jesus as an awakened being and a good teacher into my mind, into my life. And then I could get to work on the word Christ because I wasn't rejecting anything anymore. I, I did, Jesus was no longer a go-between between God and myself. And I like the word God, I always have. And I, God has evolved over the years. In fact, what was always so frustrating for me in my spiritual growth is just when I thought I knew what God was, God went and changed on me. It got bigger. It just kept getting bigger. And no matter what, I, I, you know, how, how wide my arms would go to embrace what I thought it was, it would expand beyond my arms. It would expand beyond my understanding. And it would expand beyond my words. There aren't the correct words to describe God. There aren't the right words to describe love. There aren't, so it came down to acceptance. And I figure I want to accept the best. And if the best is, it's too much to understand, I'll take it. Because I know no matter what, it's good. It's not mad at me. And it only is willing for my best. Now, I'm not always willing for my best. I wish that I were. But I'm not. And here's why. I enjoy stuff. I like stuff of the world. Now, nobody says I can't enjoy stuff of the world. That's not the point. I, nobody says, well, you cannot be uh, spiritual and enjoy stuff of the world. They don't say that at all. But sometimes I prioritize stuff over spirit. Anybody? <laughs> you know, I thought, oh, I'm going to Macy's today instead of a church, you know, or whatever. I don't want to pray because I'm afraid of what the answer will be. It might deter me from my, uh, my gluttonous ways. I don't want to hear, don't eat that cookie. 
<laughs> I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear, don't uh, get agitated in the grocery store. I don't want to hear, unfortunately, I have been hearing, don't be so agitated on the highway. I'm really grateful for that one. But I, but, and so, but I pay attention to that stuff where I think I don't want to hear it. And I say, yes, I do. I do want to hear it. I would rather choose for peace and for love than for stuff. Most of the time. I pay attention for the other part. I pay attention for both parts because I'm grateful. Because that intimacy of the Christ. And I, when I first started hearing the Christ in me is awake now, I don't remember. Uh, where I, I'm sure I heard it in unity by somebody. And I really embraced that. I thought, oh, Christ in me is awake now. And that's how I started doing my meditations. That's how I started uh, my alone time meditations. I, I'd start it with the Christ in me is awake now. And then I would go into whatever mantra I used, whatever counting, whatever. whatever. But the Christ in me is awake now, opens me up for all sorts of spiritual revelation, all sp sorts of spiritual awakening. And that's what Advent is. You know, it's about the coming forth of the Christ. It's not about the coming forth of a baby. It's not the coming forth uh, of, a, of a man. It is the coming forth of an awakening, the birth of our divine mind the birth of our willingness to connect to what we know to be true, even if we don't want it to be true. And has anybody ever felt the relief in knowing that you were wrong? So, oh, man. Okay, it hurts. But thank goodness I know now. Thank goodness I know the difference now. You know, where Kenneth just saying that what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Yeah, because he's right. Back, Bert Beckrack wrote that, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was right in the. See, there would be too, too many syllables to the, what the world needs now is the awareness of love, sweet love. <laughs> or even better, the conscious awareness of love, sweet love. The, you now, suddenly you've got to write a whole new melody to fit all those syllables in. But that's what it's saying, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know if the authors intended that. But we have to start looking at our spiritual terms and uh, stop declaring their absence, but declare their presence. So you see, it's not that there's not enough love. It's just that I'm not paying attention. I, I've been saying there's not, so I think there's not. I don't need more peace. I have all the peace I'm ever going to have. Now I have to use it. I don't need more love. I don't need more faith. I have all I'm going to have, but I need to direct it in the right way. Because you see, I can misuse love as easily as I can use it. I can misuse it by obsessing about a person, a place, a thing, uh, and think that it suddenly confuse uh, a person with my, my, I'll call it higher power, with my God. Anybody ever done that? You know, where you said, oh... You know, you start to spend your life trying to please a person instead of deepening your awareness of God as presence itself. Now, before I came to <coughs> Unity, I had no idea words like that. Presence. <laughs> what was that? I'd never heard that. You know, in his presence, I'd heard things like that. But to me, that just meant I was going to stand here. I didn't know that God was presence itself. Unity taught me that. And I liked it. That See, that made it so when I could find out about the itself stuff, the itself, that God is presence itself, God is love itself, God is intelligence itself. See, then I'm not trying to get something from God. I'm stepping into it because if God is everywhere presents, I can't be absent and it can't be absent. So on a hard day, Anybody? Anybody ever have a hard day? Yeah. Look, you ever have a hard day? Yeah, okay. Just make sure I can see your hand go up. Uh, <laughs> there's some denial going on in this room. Uh, in the presence, on a hard day, I can realize, wait a minute. I'm here in the presence of God. 
I have no idea what it means, but at least I could find comfort in it. And that's what I began to do. I began to get silent. I'm in the presence of God. Granted, it's harder when somebody's in the car with you and you're trying to get in the presence of God because there's other opinions and stuff. It's harder, you know, when you live with somebody. And uh, I'm in the presence of God. I'm in the presence of God. Shut up! I'm in the presence of God. I'm in the presence of God. I'm praying in here. I'm in the presence of God. I'm in the presence of God. And, and uh, boy, you really want to offend uh, some unity ministers. Go to a conference. And you're about to start the praying, and people are just and holler out, "Shut up! We're praying up here." Oh, unity ministers do not like to be told to shut up because prayer is going. I have gotten some looks, let me tell you, because I'm always the one that does it, uh, and because uh, I think it's funny to do that. And for some other people, it just reminds them of their parents. <laughs> it pushes the parental button. Anyway. So, with the Christ awakened in me, Christ awakened in me, I can confidently walk through a difficult time. I can forget a hundred times a day and still know, oh, wait a minute, the Christ has awakened in me. There are divine solutions here. There are divine, there's divine understanding. There is divineness. There is beingness. There is, there is, there is. God is, I am. Life is, I am. Love is, I am. Intelligence is, I am. That's what my I am is. If you, if, I don't know if you, how many times you've ever heard this, the, the old command, thou shalt not take the Lord, Lord's name in vain. It doesn't mean you're swearing using God, the word God. It's your misuse of your I am. And let's not get superstitious about it, but let's become aware of it to declare, I am poor, I am sick, I am this, I am that. That is taking God's name in vain. Because I am is our God identity. It is our Godness, as it were. And that's why I like to declare, I am good, I am whole. I am free. No matter what's going on in the physical, no matter what's going on in the mental and emotional, I want to correctly use my I am because then I know that whatever's going on is going to pass. Even the stuff I like is going to pass. If it's earthly, you know, it's going to pass. If it's fleshly, it's going to pass. It came to pass. It didn't come to stay. And so to pay attention to all that, it's like, oh, okay. So I, because, well, we're trying to get rid of what we don't like. And we're afraid of letting go of what we do like. And, I, and so a, instead of being in a moment, well, I enjoy this now. And no one is taking my good away from me. So I no longer have to <clears throat> stick my claws in. <laughs> to hold on to, uh, to keep from being pulled away from my good. I, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't know I had a food issue. It was only recently when I started gaining weight, I knew I had a food issue. And now I did a drink of water, sorry. <coughs> and I will bring my very elegant orange mug. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, as a kid, I didn't know I had a food issue. I didn't know I was afraid of running out of cookies because they were always there and I never gained weight. I was a skinny, skinny kid. I was a skinny young adult. I was a skinny middle-aged adult. And if I'm middle-aged now, I'm frightened because I'm going to be very old one day. Then. Uh, it was only in the past few years when I started gaining the weight that I realized, oh, I don't exercise anymore. I drive and I sit and I, and I uh, now I'm gaining weight. I didn't know. I ate the same amount of food I always did. And, and, yet, and so I had to start paying attention. Oh, I eat because I'm afraid that there's something absent. There's some piece of good. If I don't eat that right now, because I have a feeling. Anybody? <laughs> you know, you have a feeling. You got to do something. You got to take something. You got to do something. And, and, and uh, we're learning, bit by bit. Oh, I have a feeling. Oh, I have a feeling 
well, that's not a demand that I must do something now to myself or someone else. That is not a command. Temptation, one of my favorite things. Temptation is a suggestion. It is not a command. And I used to think it was a command. What's not, I still do. <laughs> I sat with David and said, I have to have this cookie right now. I, I can't, I will not survive <laughs> if I don't have this cookie right now. And, uh, and, and so, again, I'm not fat shaming anybody because there's no cause for it. If God were mad at me because I gained weight, because my knees hurt, well, then I need a new God, quite frankly, is what I need. But within the intimacy of the Christ, to affirm my Christ awakening every single day, every single day, perhaps several times a day. And uh, you, Jesus is a great example of the intimacy of the Christ. If the way, at least by the way he is written. So look at that. He had confidence that God was his source. He called it Abba, which meant daddy. I don't do that. I call God, God. I call God it. I call God, God. Because then I call God my source. I don't, I don't want to get confused by gender association. I don't want to get confused by old limited thinking. But I still like the word God. So to go from there, at every moment I can remember to and affirm Christ in me is awake now. I am here and I am willing to know the truth about my thinking, whatever my thinking happens to be. I'm here and willing to know the truth about this piano. So Spirit, tell me about this piano. Tell me what to think about it. I'm here and willing to know about this floor. So Spirit, tell me what to think about this floor. You say, I have an intimate relationship with what I call Spirit. It's very familiar to me. I have an intimate relationship with the language that I use surrounding spirit or the Christ. I have an intimate relationship, meaning I'm very familiar with it, and I feel that it is very familiar with me. When I do my, my uh, conversations with God, and uh, the voice that I hear that I write down and the responses to my questions... It is very familiar with how I can hear in the language that I need in order to be most effective in hearing and receiving. And so all of us in our, uh, we really ought not treat God as a way off being that we aren't really familiar with but have to obey because our parents scared us into it. We must declare and find a very intimate, familiar relationship with a power that some call greater than ourselves, with a God, as it were, that is on our side all of the time. Not only that is on everybody's side, you know, your God is on your side, your God is on your side, your God is on your side. It's, it's when I say your God, it's not that there is a million gods, but there, how many people are on the planet? There's that many different understandings. You know, what do we got here? 20 people here today? There are 20 different church services happening right now. Because we're all hearing it differently. And so, so to pay attention to that and say, okay, this is my church service. Because I am hearing Sean speak in this way and it's, connecting these dots within my head. Now, I suggest you go with him and say, Spirit, tell me the truth of what Sean is saying so that I can hear it and I can apply it and I can be more open and more willing and more familiar with true thinking, with love thinking, with wisdom thinking. It's our final week of Advent. Next Sunday is Christmas morning. No, it isn't. Next Sunday is the day after Christmas. See, I'm testing. <laughs> uh, 
And we will come in next week and celebrate the day after Christmas. Something I, Kenneth and I were talking the other day. And we were talking, and he was talking about the, well, you know, actually, the, the wise men came right after Christmas, like, like January 6th or something. And everything. And I said, well, here's the thing about that Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. <laughs> His guess that he, uh, he was born in April. And Kenneth said, nevertheless, they came after he was born. <laughs> and I thought, good point. Good point. Facts don't matter. How are we going to use this stuff in order to have our awakening today? That we can walk out of here on this Sunday morning and say, I have a new thought about God. I have a new thought about Jesus. I have a new thought about the Christ. And most importantly, I have a new thought about me. I'm going to see the world differently today. I'm going to see it in light. I'm going to see it in love. And I'm going to see it in the very presence that God is. Is that okay? Yes. Is that okay? Could that be the correct perception for today? Because that's the gift of unity. And so I know Ken is coming up here in a second to do his next song. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Kenneth. Yeah. <laughs> and so let us give thanks now that we have uh, offered ourselves this new thought to think about the intimacy of the Christ, the familiarity, the friendship, and the life affirming message that, oh, I am loved. I've always been loved. And I'm always going to be loved. So it is.